Hmm? Like the logo that's coming in this. Oh, I'm good. Open, close, whatever. Whatever you like. Doesn't matter to me. Not too noisy out there. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's just, uh, I guess, basic Q&A. Uh, I'm Tiffany Grant. I've been working in the anime industry now for close to 20 years. Um, I've worked uh, an awful lot as a voice actor. I've done script adaptations. I've gone to over 200 conventions. Um, used to work in a talent agency. I work in uh, commercials, film, theater. So any questions you have about acting and theater and film and anime and conventions, any of that stuff, I would be delighted to speak with you about any of those topics. And if you have no questions, I promise you I can talk for the rest of this hour <laughs> on my own. I can totally do that. Cool. It's a thing. So, do you guys have any questions that you're absolutely dying to ask me? Yeah. Uh, yeah I have a question. Um, right here. Um, how did you get the role of Oscar? Oh, how did I get the role of Oscar? Well, um, when uh, when Evangelion, when ADV was working on Evangelion, uh, we had been dubbing shows for about, you know, two and a half years at that time. So we had worked on uh, well, one TV series, Blue Seed, we've done several um, OVAs, so um, we had had some experience. And interestingly, at the time that Avon Yelling was being cast, I, was, I didn't even know that, that was happening. I didn't know that it was being cast or that there were auditions. But after they started working on it, I started kind of hearing about it. and there was kind of a little bit of a buzz going about this show. Now, you have to keep in mind that when we were doing the English language dub of Evangelion, it was still running on TV in Japan. It had not, it came out in home video in the United States before it came out in home video in Japan, okay? So it was not some big global phenomenon we were working on it. It, it was just a show, and hey, it's cool, and there's, you know, giant robots, whatever. So. Anyway, so the, the main parts have been cast for the first few episodes, you know, Misato, Ritsuko, Gendo, Shinji, that blue-haired chick. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so they had, they had cast, they had cast those principal roles in the show. Now, you know, Asuka doesn't come in until episode 8. Well, anyway, I heard they were working on this show, and I apparently was not in it. Because back in those days, we used to only record two episodes at a time because that is how they came out on ye olde video cassette. Like the videotape would come out yeah. and there would be two episodes on the videotape. So that's all we would work on at one time. So they did volume one, they did volume two, they did volume three. I am still not in this show. So I went to the director, Matt Greenfield, and I said, can I, can I just work on the show? Maybe I could do like some background parts or something like that. No, you can't. You have to wait until your character comes in in episode eight. And, uh, you know, I promise you it's, it's a good part. Yeah, and I'm thinking, fight. yeah, yeah, sure it is. <laughs> anyway, he has this uh, camera up on top of a filing cabinet. It's all like... Wow. And so under Pimp Daddy Gamera's like big giant uh, turtle arms, there's a there's a ray on one side and there's an Asuka on the other side. And he points that he goes, okay, see that girl right there, the one in the red. Now that's your character, that's the one you're gonna play. But we're not doing that episode yet. Oh, okay, fine. Finally, I get called in to work on the show, and I think, well, I want to see what this thing is about, so I got the, the, the VHS tapes, and I watched the first seven episodes, I don't know, there's some whiny kid who's running away a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so I was watching it, and, you know, I wanted to record it. What I didn't find out for quite some time after that is that I was pretty much the only person who did not audition, and the thing was, Something they used to do an awful lot uh, in the old or early ADV days is that they would hold these screenings. So when they would start working on new shows, they would every Friday or whatever, I don't know, I, I wasn't an employee of ADV, so I didn't get to go to these screenings. But anyway, they would have like pizza parties and screen episodes of anime in Japanese. And so people were, were watching it, and a lot of people at ADV were becoming fans of Evangelion. And as they started watching it and learning more about it, 
all these people kept coming into Matt's office and going, oh, so Tiffany is going to play Oscar, right? And uh, anyway, so I don't know. I was just apparently born to play Oscar. I never auditioned for the role of Oscar. It just seemed that I was supposed to be Oscar. And just coincidentally, it happens that Oscar grew up in Germany on Ich So it just was coincidental. She's German. I speak German. Kismet. I don't know. So, I mean, I don't really know how I got the role of Oscar. I just did. And I, it, I have been told it's because I am Oscar. So <laughs> that's, that's all I can really tell you. I actually did, didn't audition for that part. But I had, you know, obviously been, been working in anime for a little while at that point, and I had done some other roles. And if anybody here has seen Blue Seed, you might uh, kind of notice some shades of Asuka in uh, Komei Sawabuchi, which we did before Evangelion. Anyway. Oh, there was another person. Yes. Yeah, Mushroom dude, right? Yeah, here. It, uh, hi. I was wondering, next to Asuka, do you have any other favorite anime character you have voiced? Oh wow, you know, I, I get that question all the time about if having okay. a favorite anime character. It is too darn hard for me to pick a favorite character. It is just too difficult for me to pick a favorite one. Uh, I've voiced hundreds of characters over the years, and it's really, really hard to pick, you know, a favorite one or five favorite ones, or I don't know, it's really hard. Um, what I think is great is that I don't have to pick a certain kind because I get the opportunity to keep doing different kinds of characters and um, I really, really love playing any kind of critters and little boys. Now, not exclusively, but I do really, really like doing those parts an awful, awful lot. So, but it's, it's too hard for me to narrow it down. It's, it's like if you had to pick your favorite child and you had 200 children. I think for me it's easy. <laughs> That's what it's like for me. Or as I refer to them, all the people who live in my head. <laughs> There's a lot of it in there. Okay. So, yes, we have a question. All right. Um, uh -huh. I was gonna, what, what I was going to ask you, um, how is it like, you know, when comparing working with uh, Evangelion back in the ADV days and then with, and then the upcoming, and then the move, and uh, comparing it, and how, how does that compare to, with, how does to compare right now with the movies? On the original TV series versus the movies? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, one really big difference is that when we were working on the TV series, like I said, it was, it was brand new. This was a new thing. Not a lot of people knew what it was. It wasn't um, some giant uh, cult phenomenon thing. It was just a cool TV show that we were doing. And it was only the second TV show that we dubbed. So the, the really big difference now, I think, working on Ava is that Ava is a thing. You know, it's, it's huge. I mean, it, it's big everywhere, but especially it's big in Japan. But there are a lot of preconceived ideas that people have about it now, what it should be or what it might be, what they want it to be. Um, versus, you know, we were watching it originally, nobody knew what was going to happen. Congratulations! <laughs> you know, we didn't know where ball. all of that was going to go. So, to me, that's the biggest difference, is that there's just so much more awareness and, I don't know, really pressure maybe? I I'm not really sure, but just like you feel like that, that people are watching you. And I'll, you know, all the time, people asking me about the next movie, which I don't know when we're supposed to be recording that or anything. I, I know Funimation has made the announcement that that we are going to do it, but I, you know, I don't know when we'll record it or when it will come out or anything like that. But I mean, when we were working on the TV series, people weren't asking me when's the next VHS coming out. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, it came out like every two months or something. I don't remember. That's that's the biggest difference, really. Yeah. How's your experience of playing Nojiko in One Piece? Mm. Yes, he was asking about Nojiko in One Piece. She's Nami's sister. She has these stylish blue hairdo, and they grow tangerine. Such a great gift for you, filled with vitamin C. Um, I had a lot of fun playing Nojiko. That was uh, that was pretty awesome, and. 
Yeah, uh, I, I mean, it's just a, just a different character, a different world, so uh, I, I really enjoy working in anime very much, so anytime I have the opportunity to work, I am excited. But Nojiko was pretty awesome because there was that was a pretty deep character, you know, for whatever the 10 or 12 episodes. I've and sometimes I come back and there's like a flashback that Nami has, like that time when we were children, and I have three lines, you know. So it, it's because one piece goes forever, I don't know how many times I'll keep coming back to it, but it's kind of the you show that, that keeps on giving, and every once in a while I I pop back up in it. You never know when I might be popping up again because I don't know if I can say anything about that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you pre did you prefer voice in Asuka in the original TV series or in the rebuild uh, movies? Which one do you prefer? Wow. I I don't know if I. Mm, that's hard to say. A preference between voicing Asuka in the TV series or the movies. Um, I mean, really, I've only done one movie so far. I haven't done the second movie, so I don't know if I can give a really fully-fledged answer. A friend of mine who has seen it, I haven't seen it yet, said this will be my favorite Oscar thing I've done ever, so maybe if I answer now, that will be premature. Uh, the cool thing about doing the TV series is because there was you know, there were more episodes, there was more of it, so there was a lot more to kind of chew on and really you know, flesh out the character originally. So, I don't know. I'll wait and see if, if my friend is right about how much I'm going to like doing the third movie. Yeah? Uh, is there a specific voice that you just enjoy doing, not necessarily like personality-wise, but just uh -oh. fun? Any kind of critters. Any kind of critters. Uh, and anymore, I've done so many things, I start losing track of what they all are, but um, God, I, there was something I worked on recently where I was this little thing that was like a cross between a bat and a penguin. And every time, I mean, he did talk. He, he did actually speak, because, you know, sometimes the critters, they don't talk, which I like. But every time when he was flying anywhere with his little tiny, tiny wings, he'd be like, <laughs> So anything that's like silly noises, that is absolutely my favorite thing to do. Any kind of ridiculous noises. Um, I did a flying fish type creature in one piece, and um, it didn't talk, but it just was like, uh, <laughs> was that? That was all I did, pretty much. <laughs> and the director showed it to me, he's like, can you do that? And I was like, yes, I can. I can do that. <laughs> so that's awesome. Any, any critter noises, especially, let me say, if it's critter noises, and this is the holy, holy um, pinnacle of voice acting, critter voices, uh, no words, and no lip flaps. I mean, that's the best. That is the best. So if they, if it's just something like, and it's a bone to gun, no mouth. So, excellent. So, critters, no mouths, funny noises. There you go. That's the best. Any kind of funny noises. Yes. When, when, when you're like in life, like you're acting, you, you get right then when you speak, right? So how, what is, what's the difference when, when animation, I mean a character can be on screen the whole time, but it, the, the actor doesn't speak, so does, does that, is that considered like, uh, I mean, would, would a person be credited as being on there? Because they, they would Oh, you're saying like, what if you just saw the character, but yeah. the character never speaks? Yeah, the voice actor would know, you wouldn't. So get a credit. They would have to make like a noise in order to be credited as. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. But I mean, it would be pretty unusual. I and mean, yeah, you know, sometimes they show a character and they don't talk. They're just looking secretly around the corner or something. But yeah, I mean, they're that the the drawing is not the actor. So yeah, if you just see the the character, you know, the animation of the character. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be credited for working in that episode if I actually didn't speak in the episode. But, um, yeah, if, if literally in one episode all I did was, mm -hmm. yes, that would be a credit. <laughs> right there. I mean, it's not like some fantastical amount of money, but no one ever brings you in to just go, mm -hmm. you know, there's like 
several hours as well. Usually there's at least like half an hour of recording or some amount of time where you will be doing other things.